All right, guys, what's up? Let's talk about the original Aladdin from 1992. In preparation for the Aladdin remake that comes out uh, this month at the end of the month, I will review Aladdin, Aladdin Return of Jafar, and Aladdin and the King of Thieves um, because these three love the first Aladdin, and the other two I've seen a couple times as since I was a kid. And the first Aladdin today, which I'm reviewing, is one of the one of those special Disney movies that I. It's one of my fir one of the first movies I was introduced to whenever I was a baby. Like I actually was. This came out in '92. I was born in '93, but I think like '95, I started watching movies. I think I think that's whenever I started because The Lion King, this, and Toy Story were my f earliest memories, I believe, of movies. So I this is very this is a very important movie to me. It is one of my childhood staples because I watched it so many times afterwards. And again, like starting out, like I mentioned Alan Mangan a lot recently on this channel because I did that Newsies movie and I did, I also did a review for a Little Shop of Horrors which you'll see sometime soon in the next month or so. So I've been watching a lot of movies with Alan Mangan's music which he's a fantastic composer. But I wanted to start out this review saying that Alan Mangan's score in this is again incredible. Like. All of his Disney scores, especially in the 90s, he did a lot of the scores for the Disney movies, and they are really, really incredible. And this is no exception. This one is so great. The score is so great. Um, it's just, again, an incredible set of music that he did. The song Arabian Nights that it starts out with is such an incredibly catchy and memorable song, and it completely... In, uh, it completely... De uh, What's the word? I'm trying to think of the word. It completely, like, puts you into this world and describes everything in the world in a song. And I really like that. Um, really love that. It tells everybody what this world is about and this Arabian world that they're in. Um, and I love how Aladdin, whenever he's introduced, he's got this funny banter because Aladdin is a very likable Disney lead character. I really do like him. Even though he makes mistakes, he, he does have things that he does wrong. He's like Ariel in that instance from The Little Mermaid where like she makes a lot of mistakes too. By the end they're redeemed. But Aladdin I do like a lot as a character. Um, he's got such a great funny personality. Like whenever he steals bread in the opening and the guy, the Sultan's guards grab him. Before he grab, before they grab him, he's talking to these girls and they're like getting into trouble again, Aladdin. And he said, "Well, it's only trouble if you get caught." And then the Sultan guard grabs him and he says, "Gotcha." And then Aladdin says, "I'm in trouble." Like jokes like that are really great. And the guy who voiced Aladdin uh, was like Steve from Full House. That guy has such a, he's got a charismatic voice. Like he's very funny and fun in both of these things. So I do like that voice. He's a good, um, he's a good voice for this. And I like how his opening song is really catchy and charming, too, where he's running around the city, just going around, stealing food, being chased by the Sultan Guards, running through all of these little uh, buildings and just getting, jumping off of high buildings, flying into clothes, getting, like, finding every, re every means to escape where he feel like he's done it for his whole life just being a street rat running running around scrounging for scraps and not finding anything like nobody takes him seriously and nobody uh nobody thinks of him as anything else besides a street rat so i i like that it the opening completely gives what he is like it, it does a good job of that and i love the scene because he has that whole song about and he's stealing the bread he sings he and Abu take the bread. They're going to eat it. And then these two kids that look hungry are right there. So Aladdin, after all this trouble, gives those kids the bread. And I do like that that's a character trait for Aladdin that makes him good inside. Like, he's just a poor kid. He doesn't have parents. He doesn't have anything. So he has to steal. But then whenever he sees somebody lower than him, like these kids that were hungry, like, he gives it to them. And I, and I really like that. I like that you just give this character... Um, something where you 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 understand where he's from, but you feel why he's doing this. But then whenever he whenever he sees something worse, he gives it to those kids, the bread. So I I really like that. That's just a very likable thing about Aladdin. Um, it just shows that he has a heart and wants something more to be to be something more than just a poor boy, which is the song that he sings. Uh, 
there's something much more to him. I forgot what the actual name is called, but that song is really good too. And then let's talk about Jasmine. The uh, the first Disney character... No, I guess the second Disney princess character that is more... Uh, more passive. Because before this, you got... Not mentioning, not counting Ariel. Uh, you've got Snow White, Aurora, and Cinderella, which are all three characters that are not the stars of their own movie, where they just they're there to look pretty and be happy, and and there's not much to them. And Jasmine in this is like Ariel is like a reaction to that. We're like Jasmine in this is is so passive and she goes out she goes and runs away she doesn't sit there and wait for a man to get her and i and i that is one of those cliches for disney princesses and i do like how this one kind of breaks that trait um and disney does that a lot after this and they still do it right now moana a couple years ago did that too where like the these characters the disney princesses are more than just like happy and whimsical and and I would rather have that even though I do like the movies that Snow White, Aurora and Cinderella are in but I I like how these characters these and they should be more passive just because they're women I think it's because they came out at a time period where women were not treated as such as as important so I like the fact that Jasmine is a little more important in this movie and, and is passive and does what she wants and she has a will of her own. I like that. I like that that's how it should be. And she's the one who escapes and runs away because she wants to marry for love and not marry not marry just any random guy in the street, any random prince. So I like that and I like the fact that she is a very nice and passive person. Um, she's not relegated to just sitting there. I think that's good. really like that. Um, and speaking of the villain, Jafar, let's talk about Jafar the villain who has such a swarmy, great performance. This guy who voices him, I don't know his name, Jafar, really love Jafar. He's a great villain. He's a really awesome, just all he wants is power. He's just a douchebag. He wants to just get power and marry Jasmine and his voice performance is just so good in this movie and it's just so incredibly snarky and just works so well and I love his voice performance um he's so great and also Iago who Gilbert Gottfried voices is great as well he's this just this jerk parrot who like won't be quiet and like he just he's just Jafar's lackey but they act like they're a married couple because they both complain at each other like they're doing wrong to each other and I just think that's funny that's funny banter so I like Iago as well. And Gilbert Gottfried, of course, if you've ever heard his voice, he's got an incredibly memorable voice. So it's so funny to hear his voice in this. Um, and then Abu is such a hilarious side character, the monkey that Aladdin is friends with. Like, this character just is so charismatic and so funny. It's because Frank Welker voices him. He voices all these characters in, in, in all these animated things, Disney or otherwise, where, like, he just does all these voices. And he is so good in this. And Abu is just so hilarious. Um, everything he says just makes me laugh. Makes me laugh out loud. Um, like whenever, whenever he, uh, whenever Aladdin tries to steal something and then pretends that he doesn't, and then like the sul the Sultan's guards look at Abu and he just goes Abu, and then he just flies away. Like that's really funny, and that really works with Abu. Like he's just a funny because he's got such this animation and the voice has got such great comedic timing that Abu is just such a funny character. And of course, I, I haven't even mentioned the big one, the genie, the one that everybody loves. And I love the genie in this movie. Robin Williams, um, this is how I was, of course, introduced to Robin Williams. I didn't see, this is one of the first movies I ever saw, so this is the first Robin Williams thing I was introduced to. And I think after this, I might have saw Mrs. Doubtfire next, which is a couple, which is a year after this. But Robin Williams just really sells this movie, and he... And his character, the genie, are so much more important than... Well, I mean, people still give it credit, but this is... This movie on its own, with genie and his pop culture references, has created a whole different use of how Disney 
and Disney uh, works with their movies. Like, for example, after this and before this, there were no real pop culture references in any Disney movie. And in this one, when this happened, every Disney movie after this happened like that. Um, the Lion King had Timon and Pumbaa, where they were very kind of self-aware meta, silly. And then you had uh, other characters, like, make jokes, like, in Pocahontas that, like, were reactions that were to the audience. Or... In Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is very apparent to this, where, like, the gargoyles are very much trying to be the genie. Um, or how Danny DeVito plays Phil in Hercules, and, like, he's very, like, out, like, he says a lot of dumb jokes that are funny. Like, it, it's, it's weird, because the genie started this whole thing of side characters where they all, all these side characters afterward became self-aware or meta where the movies became self aware meta, like Hercules is definitely an example of that, where like it's got like Nike sponsorship in the movie, even though it's not it's set in the eight in the Greek times or in the ancient times. So it's like it it's it's a weird meta sense of humor. But like this movie started that and also this created DreamWorks and Shrek. Shrek is a lot like this movie where it's so self aware humor like this and pop culture references that Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was involved with Disney and in charge of it at this time, left during Pocahontas in 95 and went on and did DreamWorks and made Shrek, which is a very similar movie to this. Um, so it's just funny to see that. And it's so funny to see that this genie character created literally everything that happened afterwards in Disney and DreamWorks. That's just a really interesting thing. Um, really interesting. Um, and also... Yeah, and I love whenever the genie's introduced. I love his song, Never Had a Friend Like Me, because it's so catchy. It's so zingy. All the animation style is really great. The animation in this is, again, top-notch for Disney in the 90s. Like, it is truly, really great. And it's just so fun. Like, I just have a fun time watching Genie turn in all these things, uh, say all these funny jokes to Aladdin while he's singing the song. And, also, and then after that, whenever... He turns Aladdin into a prince, but not really. He's not a real prince, but he makes him look like one. Then that Prince Ali song, where the genie is doing all these jokes and turning into all these people, like a big, like a lady, or like a little kid, or like an old man, while he's while they're singing the Prince Ali song, and he's trying to get everybody to rally up Aladdin as Prince Ali. That's so funny too, and I really love that. Love the Prince Ali song as well. Just his gags are great. He's got such great comedic timing in this movie. Robin Williams and the genie. Just animation-wise, it's just great as well. And, again, speaking of the songs, I'm going to point out most of the songs in this movie because I love the score and the, and the music. But whenever Aladdin and Jasmine have the whole new world, that song, that's just one of the best Disney songs ever. Like, it's truly moving. It's so catchy. It's so memorable. Them flying on a magic carpet out uh, in all these areas of where they're at and in the clouds and the sky. Like, it, it's so memorable and so great. Um, I really love A Whole New World. And I can see why the remake is using that song in the marketing a lot. I get using that a lot in the marketing, so it's inter so it's it's very much a lot of people's favorite song in the movie. Even though I love all the music, um, and I like how speaking of Aladdin, I like how he again he's a flawed character because he has a he starts out where he is this poor boy that has nothing, and then he lies to Jasmine about being a prince because he loves her, and then it causes more trouble, and then it causes Genie to go away, and then Jafar to take Genie and become his master. Um, and Aladdin has that thing where everything he does ruins everything and affects everybody around him, like Ariel from Little Mermaid, which again, I'm speaking of her because they're so close in, in uh, time, these two movies release, so it's like they're really similar characters. And I just like how he does learn the errors of his way of the errors of his ways in the end, but it just takes a while. And I do like I do like the the revelation with him. I do like that. Um, and speaking of the end of the movie, the climax is fantastic. I love how Jafar turns into a genie and he just causes everything really bad to happen. Like throw like everything in the like visually pleasing. Like it gets dark and it gets really red. And I love the red red look of the movie whenever Jafar takes over. I think that's really cool. And Genie or uh, Jafar as the genie is a great adversary to Aladdin at the end and it really, really works. And the very end where Genie 
throughout the movie has mentioned that he wants to be set free, but he wants freedom. He doesn't want to be just trapped in this thing anymore. I love whenever Aladdin lets him, like, actually wishes to let him free. And it is just one of them. It's just a very satisfying emotional moment because Genie, you could tell how much he wanted to be free. And like whenever he does, with the music score swelling, it's just so emotional and so well done. Really love that. Um, really satisfied with the conclusion with Aladdin and Jasmine. Jasmine finally getting married to to Aladdin, even though he wasn't a prince. I love that as well. Um, and Jafar getting thrown into the Cave of Wonders for a thousand for millions of years even though he returns to even though he returns in the return of Jafar the direct video sequel like yeah I will review next but next week but or no I'll review it the next I'll review it the same day uh but this just overall this Aladdin the original Aladdin just has a fantastic score incredibly charming characters great humor great music um and a fantastic conclusion where I just love this movie I've really I've always loved it, even as a kid, but man, this one, this time, it really got me. Really loved everything about Aladdin from 1992. I think this is a fun, really, really lovable, enjoyable Disney film. Um, so that's my review on Aladdin from 1992. And next up, I will review The Return of Jafar, which is the first direct video sequel to Aladdin and the first Disney direct video sequel ever. Take take of that of what you will. But that's my review next. If you like this video, check my links down below. And uh, tell me what you think of the original Latin. I want to know your thoughts. Tell me down below and we can have a conversation. So thank you guys so much for watching.